Hey data fans, Reed here. Today I want to walk you through another use case for using visual calculations. In this case, specifically to be able to anchor it to either the first or the last value in a visual and then use that for an error bar comparison. As you can see in front of us here, this one specifically looks at the value from the last place on the axis in here. And then there's an error bar that shows how far above or below any of the other values are within that visual. So I'm going to walk you through the visual cal creation of this, the assignment to the error bars and how to build it out. So let's go ahead and hop into Power BI and get started. So as always, to start the conversation, I'll mention again, basically what we're building out. So in this case, we have by month and year, a series of sales values, and I wanna compare any of these particular sales to the last one. Now this can either be last or first. There's actually a visual calc function that lets you grab that very easily, better so than actually the ones that come standard with DAX and a normal measure, which we'll be getting into in a second, but when you create that, then you actually have an ability to turn on error bars and visualize that even including a bit of a larger tick marker, which in this case is essentially a hidden line chart. So let's come and go to the visual calc start here and kind of walk through how to build this. So I'm gonna open up my data and my fields pane. And right now this is technically a clustered column chart. What I'm gonna change this to is a clustered column and line chart. Nothing's gonna change yet, but I want to have the well over here specifically to do a few things. So we're gonna go um, to this option here to the line Y axis, and we're gonna use the F of X button, a little symbol up here to add a new visual calc. And for sake of demonstration purposes, I'm gonna be using the last value, but this could be first if you want to. So last value equals, and we can either do it formulaically from here. You do also have an option, by the way, to come up to modeling visual calcs and you can use the options in here where you can do versus next, versus first, or versus last. So these also can work to help you start with them. So you can also use the versus last one. And in this case, I'm just honestly gonna specifically use the last function of that. I'm gonna call this sales last. And then the field is what goes into here. So let's go ahead and pop in sales, there we are. So that's just the last sales value in here. Now this added it to the column Y axis. I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna put that onto my line axis there. There we are. Now what this line is actually gonna become, if we come back out of this for just a moment and we're gonna close down this, we're gonna to go to the format pane and I'm gonna do a little bit of tweaking on this line. So one, I actually wanna turn off my data labels just to keep it cleaner. There we go. And I'm gonna to come to the lines here uh, just for consistency purpose, I am going to change it to that orange that you saw to make it a bit more visible, but I'm not actually going to show the line. I'm going to get rid of this entirely, and I'm going to come to markers, and I'm going to turn this on. There we are. So there's a marker indicator for where that line position is. And the reason I do this is because these are better markers than the built-in ones with the error bars. It's bigger, wider, and you can change the types. So I'm going to change this to a line. Uh, let's go ahead and make this like... About 10. Yeah, let's go ahead and keep that at a 10. And now what I can do, if I come to error bars, so I can choose my sales and I can anchor it to the value that I have. Um, sorry, other way around. I'm going to go to sales last and I'm going to anchor this to my sales amount. Now I tried this. So I have my sales value in here and this could be either a bug or a feature, but at the moment there's a limitation. My visual calculations that I've built. I can add it to the upper bound, but it doesn't actually do anything. So it, it says it's in here. If I come off to the other one and I come back, it's still there, but no line occurs. So it doesn't appear that we can actually use visual calcs in the error option in this. But that means that I can come to the visual calc itself, turn on the error bar and use the original value that I have, which is sales. So I put that into here. So now it's going from the line or the visual calc that I have for last value and it's anchoring it to the sales amount. Now, a couple of configurations for the error bars. I don't need the marker. Again, what I mentioned is that the marker itself, uh, one, it's on the opposite side. I don't want the marker there, so that's the problem. Um, but I find that it's a bit more customizable from the line chart perspective, so that's why I flipped it. So I'm gonna turn off the marker and I'm gonna go to the bar and I'm gonna make the bar the same color. And the last thing that I'll do is I'll turn off the tooltip itself. Now we have, essentially, there's the value and we have it anchored 
to each one of our other values to show whether or not it's basically above or below water for whatever that last period was. And that could have been the first as well. Very easy to change this. Sales last, if I just swap to this for first, then it grabs the first value and compares to that. But it's a nice way to be able to do a comparison and see basically over all the periods how you've done to your latest or your earliest value in this case. Now, a couple of other things that I might mention to do um, if we want to see additional values is I can take this and I can repeat it again in the pill tip section. Now, I can't drag this twice over there. If I move it, it as you've seen, it basically takes away the visual. So I can add it a second time, though. I can go to tool tips. I can add the f of x. I'm going to go to sales last and to there because this way we get it hovered. We see that last value. And let's actually, let's just call this uh, sales last line. Since that's hidden, essentially, and we're not actually ever going to get that on a tool tip. So I want this one down here to just be that. There we go. All right. So now, we should, yep, exactly. We should have all of those appear in there. Technically, you'll get the tool tip up here, so you can call it whatever you need to. Um, you can even call it the uh, like sales last marker. Uh, edit that one more time because I think, uh, yep, I put in a T. There we go. Whatever the name convention means. But the biggest reason is I want the standard tooltip in here to have that. And we can further enhance this by doing a couple of basic comparisons. So I'm also going to add one more visual calc down to here. Sales last. Let's do last var. That's equals sales minus, yep, sales minus last. There we are. So now we have the value showing up into there. So there's the variance, and then we can even do a variance percentage. So one more visual calc, come into here. Let's do a var percentage, and this will be divide sales by the variance. There we are. And now one thing that this doesn't have, unfortunately, is if we come over to the uh, options in here, like we have data labels for each one of these, like the markers, but we don't have data labels for the tooltips, unfortunately. So the way around this, if you want this to format just a little bit more cleanly, is we can come back into this. Let's go ahead and wrap this in a format. And then this would be hash comma zero dot zero percentage for the percentage in here. There we are. Oh, and one thing I realized is I actually had the values flipped. The variance should be at the top. Sales should be at the bottom. Flipping this, this now should fix it. There we go, 14. Okay, now we're getting the correct percentages. And then similarly with the other ones, we can go ahead and just throw a quick format in there. This would be percent. All right, there we are. And I'll just copy and paste this into the other two. And last sales, there we are. Done. There we go. So now we get the formatting. So small things. It would be nice if the UI lets you do the formatting for that, but at least we get all of the values we'd want to see into here where we get the full track down. We get the sales, whatever the last one was, the variance and percentage that are all showing up into there. But it's a nice way, coming back to the page here, to visualize out the data, show a mapping of that, and really see that path over time of how it compares to the values that you're getting within the visualization itself. So a really nice way to provide some further comparative analytics using visual calcs. And again, specifically the functions of first and last that don't exist natively in DAX without having to provide additional context for whatever the axis is, because this will automatically allow you if I was to come and swap this out for other items, um, as an example, so like in color in here, it will actually grab the first and last periods and then do a comparison of that. So anything that is from left to right on the axis can be swapped out. Put this in brand name as well. There we go. All of that's going to be comparing with any of the values we have, as long as it's, of course, sorted by the actual, in this case, there we go. Yeah, it has to be sorted by the axis alphabetically of first versus last in here. A datum is last when the axis is what's sorted on. And you can get that to be a fairly universal uh, ability to compare between those. So I really like the university, universal application of this. Coming back to month and year, putting that in there again. There we go. So hopefully this is something that you found useful. I'll be interested to know your comments, thoughts, suggested for a future video. Don't forget to drop that down in the comment section down below. As always, check out some of my related content here in the upper left. 
And as always, liking, commenting, subscribing will continue to help the uh, YouTube algorithm be happy and for the channel to grow. With that being said, I will see you all in my next video.